My name is Susan Wakoma and I'm currently in a play called Never Have I Ever at the Chichester Festival Theatre and I'm playing a character called the Dago. The first film that I remember watching is actually a Nollywood film um, called Aneka, The Pretty Serpent. And anyone who knows anything about Nollywood films is that um, they can be quite scary. And um, this film, I, I think my mum had it on with some friends and it was like one of the first big Nigerian blockbusters, I guess. And I think they've remade it this year or last year. Um, but it was like one of the first and it had like, I remember there was this woman who like turned into a snake and it actually uh, started about four to six months of nightmares when I was about six. So the impact it had on me was fear. I think the performance that really made me go, God, I, I want to do that. It looks like so much fun was actually Robin Williams in Mrs. Doubtfire. I, d just in that, he has so much warmth, joy, silliness, but there's so much pathos, like that scene with him and Sally Field right at the end when they have that kind of confrontation. Obviously when I was a kid, didn't really know what was going on, but I just thought he's having so much fun and it was just the wittiest, sharpest thing with so much heart. And I remember just watching that thinking, I want to have that much fun. So yeah, that was like seminal for me. A really memorable moment, actually there's been a lot of memorable moments in the rehearsal room because we're working with Deborah Francis White who is a screenwriter and this is her very first play and I know Deborah as a comedian from her podcast The Guilty Feminist and I know that she is, she's an improviser, she's a collaborator and I did always think having done theatre before like how will that translate and she really has that improviser brain, which is best idea wins. So as we're in there and as we're coming up with things or going, oh, that doesn't feel right, or that feels right, she's constantly, you know, redrafting the script. She's constantly developing it. And so that energy that I know of her is very much alive in the room. And that makes it so exciting and makes it an even more incredible play than, you know, what we walked in with day one. So it's just those moments of going, ah, oh, Debs, I think it's this, and I go, yes, 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 more. I'm like, whoa, a new playwright would not know to do that. So yeah, that for me is like magic. And I think that this is a film that a lot of people would say, and so it's not that kind of unique a choice, but Secrets and Lies, Mike Lee, specifically for Marianne Jean Baptiste's performance, it is the most, understated, restrained, beautiful, generous performance I've seen in British film. Like, it's it's so, it's so giving and it's so gorgeous and so detailed. Like I, when I saw that performance for the very first time, I thought, you can act like that? That you can, you can have that much space, you can just sort of leave yourself alone. It's like bar none the best British performance I've seen on, on film. There's so, there's so many that I love, but the one that slapped when it got released was Drive. That was on repeat. I wanted the Scorpion jacket. I wanted to learn how to drive. I haven't done that yet. Um, yeah, that, I think the use of music is so, so beautiful in that and just bangers. On-screen characters' wardrobe that I'd really love. Now, I don't think I want their wardrobe now, but I remember, I'm trying to go through, go for like the sensation when I saw this character. So this film was on in the background when I was a kid. I remember just watching this character going, oh my God, she looks so cool. Wouldn't do it now because it's 80s. Big clue, you wouldn't wear this. But it was Melanie Griffith in Working Girl because she was like, she had like the, the mobile phone and the padded shoulders and she looked like business. She looked like she was going to work and do business. And I was like, cool business. You look like you know what you're doing. And I just remember her walking with purpose and she looked amazing. I think Sigourney Weaver was in it, looking amazing with shoulder pads. 
So yeah, not now, but when I watched it, I was like, that looks like a girl boss, <laughs> is what we would say now. I think whatever the world was when Richard Curtis made Four Weddings and a Funeral, that world, just kind of people with floppy hair, saying the F word all the time, running around going to weddings and like being in love with each other, but also like living in really nice houses. Um, you know, Bridget Jones's flat in Borough. I live near Borough, no one can afford to live in Borough. I'd like that. Like basically, I'd want to live in Richard Curtis's world so that I can afford the property. That's, That's great, <laughs> strategic. <laughs> you can tell I'm a Londoner, I'm like, so Richard Curtis. Notting Hill, that's where we want to live, that's where, we're, yeah. So I would live in Richard Curtis's world so that I can afford the property. All the Star Wars, I have never seen a Star Wars film. I've never, I've never even dipped a toe in one Star Wars film. Um, I remember I had, like, my very first boyfriend was determined to get me into Star Wars. I remember one Christmas he sat me down, he's like, this is the Christmas, and I was like, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then he was like, let's start with the second one. And I was like, no, let's just start with the first. He's like, no, no, no. It would make sense if you start with the second one. I was like, my guy, I just want to start with the first one. One, two, and he's like, no, no. Start with it. And that that was like, that killed it. I was like, do you know what? This is, this is why I don't mess with you Star Wars people. Because all I want to do is see the film chronologically. And there you'll go, like, you're like, oh no, but the third one is the one that you should watch. No, no, I've never seen a Star Wars film. <laughs>